The NBA Conference Finals have begun, but today marks the start of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. So today on the Board YouTube channel, we're going to be previewing that Game 1 and a little bit of the series, looking for the leans and hopefully some best bets for you to make. So let's get right into the video. This is the Board YouTube channel for NBA playoff content powered by the Hammer Betting Network. If you're enjoying the videos we're putting out, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more NBA playoff content just like this. For the Miami Heat, Boston Celtics Game 1 preview, once again, we have Pips NBA here on Twitter, the co-host of the Pick and Roll Show we did all throughout this season. And how are you feeling ahead of this series, Boston-Miami Game 1, a 2 versus an 8 surprising series? But how are you feeling first thoughts going into Game 1? So at, at the first look, I was like, this is so clearly Boston in, in, in five, probably. But the more I look, the more time I spend on it. I kind of i am leaning towards that we have a series here. And yeah, it was so many interesting questions and so many di di different spots. And this is some games for some a matchup for Boston Celtics that they didn't have in the first two rounds that kind of physicality and ball movement and, and tough guys. So I think it's kind of very different. So we, they don't need to late into the series. I think both Celtics, we have it, have their way when they made the right adjustments. But early into the series, we could see some fireworks from Miami Heat side. Yeah, Miami are a team that's always been, over the past few years, I think at least, they've been a team where on paper, you don't think they're the most formidable team, but then you factor in the coaching and sometimes you just factor in Jimmy Butler just doing it all. And they seem to just find a way to win games. Like last year, this was the one seed. They didn't really change their team around much from last season being the one seed. And they gave that Boston Celtics team that made the final last year a ton of problems in the conference finals. And they were a Jimmy Butler three potentially away from getting all the way to the NBA finals. But let's take a look here on Betstamp to pull up the game lines that we have here so we know exactly what sort of markets that we're going to be looking at for today. Reminder to always line shop and always make sure you have the most sports books at your disposal to be able to line shop. And in order to facilitate that, you can use our Betstamp link in the description here, betstamp.app slash the board. If you are signing up to a sports book, if you're going to do it anyways, you can always go to that link and give us a little bit of extra support here on our channel. But Boston, firmly the favorite favorite here for game one. Best price available that we're seeing is minus 345, uh, courtesy of the Canby books such as Barstool. Minus eight on the spread. You can find a plus eight and a half as well on Miami if you're looking to bet on them. But first impressions there from the game lines here for Pips. Do you think these are accurate to the way you see this game shaking out? Actually, no, because as I said, if, if Miami will get this into a series, it will be early. And Missoula is probably a bit slower to make adjustments than Spoil Strategies. Spoil Spoil is like, yeah, the best coach in the league. So I, I think in the first game, he could have an edge. And also, Boston Celtics could, could get into this game, like, not focused like they were in the game six and seven against the, the the 76ers. So I think Miami eight and a half could be a decent bet in, in, to, to get the, in, 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 into the first game of the series. So yeah, I think also the Heat had more rest. That's very crucial for Jimmy Butler. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. This was a bit of a problem last year for the Celtics. In the finals, it looked like they ran out of gas. And I think we have a similar situation this year where they've been kind of playing with their food. They really should have handled Atlanta in five. I know you you like the Atlanta Hawks, but that, that probably should have been a five-game series. Uh, and against the Philadelphia 76ers, credit to Philly for getting it to seven. I mean, they could have won it from there, but another seven-game series for Boston there. And meanwhile, Miami took care of the one seed in five games. They took care of the New York Knicks in six games. Like you said, they've had additional rest going into this series. So that could be a factor as well. And it's really tough for Boston mentally to, to get dialed in as much as, you know, two do or die games, game six, game seven. It's hard to get that focus back once again for another game and getting in for game one. So I kind of like the way that you're thinking for that one going into this game one. But what do you think lineup wise 
We're going to see from an adjustment standpoint for both coaches from Spolstra, maybe we won't see anything starting wise. Or what do you see different for Boston going to this series? Uh, I have so many different options. I went yeah. through every single one. So the first thing is kind of a question is, is, is Grant Williams going to, going to see way more minutes in this series because Time Lord Robert Williams is probably a less playable in this series than he was against Joel Embiid, helping on Joel Embiid. Yeah. Because last series he could help off PJ Tucker, but who is he going to help off in this series? So that's the thing. So I I will just start with Time Lord and his the way he can play. So he can help off. Kevin Love, that's crazy. Kevin Love can make shots in, like easily. Second thing is, do they put Time Lord defend Gabe Vincent and help of him? That that, that kind of yeah, dangerous, more dangerous than PJ Tucker, but it's kind of daring Gabe, Gabe Vincent to beat you, and I that's think that's okayish. And the third and my favorite one will be time lord being defending jim butler i think he has the size strength and, and that's very important because we saw in the last season uh series smart great defensive player white great defensive player and butler just cooked them like every possession every single time because he loves the size advantage and if you put Time Lord on him, you just take away a huge part of the Butler strength. Also, if you put Time Lord on Butler, so strength, size, he's quick enough to, 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 to stay in front of him. And then if you and then you can switch pick and rolls with uh, uh with Bema de Bar, which kind of negates some of the Miami Heat offense and lets guys stay in front of him. So that's that's interesting. That's the thing I, I can see from, from Time Lord, but I think that he will play less than he was in the last series, and some minutes will go probably to Grant Williams because he can defend, he can switch huge in this series, and he's shooting 40% from three over the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. I don't and, know if anyone remembers Game 7 against the Bucks last season. He yeah. scored 10, 10 points and did a great job on Giannis. So, yeah. that's kind of so Boston is very more in depth here because Grant Williams is like their eighth or ninth guy, and if you take a look at Miami Heat, eight or nine guy, they are not even close. So Miami Heat of the bench has Kale Martin and Kyle Lowry, and that's it. So and Celtics have Malcolm Brogdon, Derek White. Probably Time Lord this series and, and great Grant Williams. So like they are eight team deep, eight great players. So that's the thing. So that's about Grant Williams and and, and Time Lord about the matchups. I think more minutes for for Grant Williams in, in this. Yeah, I, I can I, I fully support that. Uh, Robert Williams last year, I just looked it up against the Miami Heat Eastern College Finals. Saw his minutes drop a little bit. A little bit of that could also have been that he was playing injured. Through a lot of the playoffs, although I mean, you could say everything, everything, every time Robert Williams is playing, you could say he's playing through some injury or another. I do like what you said about Robert Williams defending Jimmy Butler. Uh, I just took a second there to look up Jimmy Butler's mid range numbers and kind of daring him to shoot mid range jumpers wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. He's attempting four, just over four and a half a game, he's hitting 39% of them. So yeah. if I'm Boston, like if Jimmy Butler wants to put up 30, but takes a ton of inefficient shots like that, I can recover with that on the other end because Joe Mazzulla's offense is so three-point centric. So mm -hmm. I think that's definitely an interesting way that they could get a little bit of an advantage. Now, Joe Mazzulla as a rookie coach, does he want to kind of dare Jimmy Butler to go crazy and beat him? Not sure. Maybe that's an adjustment down the line, but it'll be interesting to see from the start how they could defend Butler, because I think that's a very good way to do it. One way I wanted to kind of look at this game betting wise, 
I did want to look at Grant Williams. Unfortunately, I don't see any Grant Williams lines posted because I agree. I think he is going to be a bigger factor in this series, but no they, lines are. That's because he didn't play in the last series. So they yeah, don't. So they don't. They don't know. I, I understandable, yeah. but uh, I, I, I that was a way I did want to kind of look at this one. But to, to end off here, any way that you're approaching Game One from a betting perspective, anything that you want to look at to maybe take advantage of. For bet betting perspective, I actually honestly don't know. I said like I, I like Miami Heat at eight and a half. I like the series for over five and a half. And that's the thing I, 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 I'm, I'm going with in, in the game one. I actually looked up at the smart 14 and a half. He had easy matchups against the Hawks. He had easy matchups against the 76ers. They left him open in both series and he had Trae Young coverage. So his line is very inflated. So I like the under on 14 and a half. But Spurs, I could just leave him wide open. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm Spolstra, I'm pretty tempted to just say, hey, Marcus, you want to beat me? Go ahead. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. So you never know. I think in the regular season, he had games with over 10 threes attempted against the Miami Heat. And that's a sign of them leaving him wide open. Right. So that's kind of it. So also, uh, so matchup and defensive schemes question is does Horford. Switch does score for top coverage. Are they going to defend uh, Ben Bema De Bio and give him attention like they did to Joel Embiid, or they are going to just drop coverage, let him that pocket space, and then he will have a, 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 then Bema De Bio will score a lot of points on offense. If they just play drop coverage without helping inside, that's then it's a, a Bema De Bio series. Uh, as much as it, crazy, ridiculous it sounds, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So another question: I have all these questions. Another question for this game one is: Do they, the Miami Heat, start Kevin Love? And if they I, do, can they switch? I think I they think. start him. I think they just they keep it consistent. They start him. Wouldn't be surprised if he's out quickly. Wouldn't be surprised if game two they switch it up after seeing what Boston kind of threw at them, but. Yeah. I don't think Spolster wants to show his hand to start game one. I think he kind of wants to dare Missoula to do that and trust his ability to, to switch on the fly and adjust. I don't know. I actually don't know. Like, as I said, the, the way Spolster gets win is being faster to adjust and to, 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 to put uh, Missoula in the tough spot. And mm -hmm. Starting game recent could do it, especially if, like, not Gabe Vincent, uh, starting... Uh, Kyle Lowry? Not Kyle Lowry, but uh, I'm just stuck here. But Caleb Martin. Starting Caleb oh, Martin. Okay. Before, okay. Could be a, a great move. He can defend. He can shoot. He can so, switch. Yeah, he can do every, a bit of everything. So, yeah. I think Miami will play some zone. Will play some switch. We'll play some. I see they'll play everything. Oh, we're gonna. I think we're gonna see a lot of zone here. I think we're gonna see a lot of yeah, zone. We'll see a bit of everything. But the question for this series is, and to get that the question every time with Boston Celtics, are they going to move the ball enough? That's mm -hmm. the main question because they, if they start matchup hunting a lot, that actually kills their their flow. And the game goes into the mud, and you have on one side Jason Tatum isolations, on the other side Jalen Brown isolations, and he's not a good ball handler, so he can create the edge. And then you have on the other side Jimmy Butler isolation. So if you want Jason Tatum isolation, Jimmy Butler isolation, you are probably going with Jason with, with Jimmy Butler. But that's okay. not the game. They're not the game the Boston Celtics want to play in this series. So they need to move the ball and just don't. Go matchup hunting. That's usually killing their foe, and that's where the game goes into the mud. And, and it's then it's a possession after possession, and then Jimmy Butler can do a lot of damage. Yeah, if that's the case, I favor the Miami Heat. If it gets into a possession by possession sort of game and late game situations, I, I kind of like Miami Heat's chances. They can keep a lot close in this series. But uh, let's wrap it up here. Uh, final betting thoughts that we've presented here. 
Miami eight and a half. We'll be fully transparent saying we're recording this the day before. So hoping these lines are still available. Eight and a half if, if available in Miami, something to think about. But Pips really likes the over five and a half games in this series at minus 120. I presented on Monday on this channel that I liked Miami at plus 425. Uh, if you can get them 400 or better to win this series, I like that play uh, going about uh, 30, a 0.3 of a unit it's on that one. Nothing crazy, but I just think Miami are a little bit undervalued in this series. But final thoughts from Pips prediction. Who's going to come away with the winning game one? Yeah, I think it was Celtics is very favored, but if Miami wants to have any chance in this series, they need to get game one or game two. And I just think coming up to this game seven against the 76ers and how they look against the Hawks and against the Sixers in the first games, I think the, here is the chance for Miami Heat in game one. Right. And also, Pelstra edge in adjusting and preparing for game one is also huge. So that, that's their chance. All right. So lots of food for thought. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, take a minute to rate and view five stars and subscribe to the board YouTube channel for more NBA playoff content like this. We'll see you tomorrow for a preview of Lakers versus Nuggets game two.